Ladies and gentlemen, this is really interesting, and it just shows that Democrats are yet again trying in some way to grasp defeat from a public relations victory. So they initially, in their minds, were victorious that they impeached Trump. Nobody cares. Swing state voters and independents oppose removal and oppose impeachment. So they, they got this momentary public relations victory, but it, it's as with everything Democrats engage in, it's a Pyrrhic victory. They're not going to win long term, and they're going to hurt more than they benefit. So Senate adopts rules for Trump impeachment trial following marathon session. Eleven defeated amendments. Eleven times McConnell and the GOP, including Mitt Romney, including people like Mitt Romney and Markowski and Collins. Everyone you would think, well, maybe they'd side with Democrats. No, this serves to unify the Republicans around Trump. Here, the Senate adopted a resolution that outlines basic rules for how President Donald Trump's impeachment trial will operate after a marathon hearing that stretched into the early morning hours and resulted in both House managers and the president's te defense team being admonished by Chief Justice John Roberts. Well, nobody cares. It actually hurts Democrats more. Um, and it's, it's actually a good thing that Republicans are going after Adam Schiff. And I explained that in one of my segments prior to the segment about Tulsi Gabbard suing Hillary Clinton for $50 million, which is a fantastic uh, defamation lawsuit. But the Senate adopted a resolution in a party line vote 53 to 47. Each of the 11 amendments offered by Senate Democrats, which included measures subpoenaing a variety of entity and officials, entities and officials, including White House uh, the White House and John Bolton were defeated by Republican-held Senate. Now, they would have needed four Republicans to vote alongside them. They didn't get four Republicans. Now, also, they're actually... President Trump basically tweeted uh, or communicated today that, oh, well, we have all the information. They lack information to even make the claim that he wasn't justified in withholding military assistance because of corruption. Now you have publications spinning that into, oh my God, he's obstructing Congress. Look, he's, he's being, um, he's being, he's bragging about obstructing Congress. No, you, you only obstruct an, an investigation or you obstruct justice or you obstruct Congress if Congress has a right to the documents. You, have, you obstruct justice if you are actually covering up a crime. This is the opinion, the conjecture, the innuendo, the insinuation, the assumption of Democrats. This is not reality. Trump didn't withhold military assistance because he's afraid of Biden. The no malarkey bus tour is not going to be nominee. Clinton is going to be nominee. Hillary Clinton is going to be nominee. This is a political machine like Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall. 1800s, look it up. A Democratic Party political machine in New York still exists. Still exists, and within the DNC, it's run by Madam Secretary. But here, Trump's eruption of lies and Davos bolsters the case against him. No, it doesn't. There's no, he's not, he's not accused of committing an actual crime. So 11 times, uh, Republicans are like, nah, you're not going to get the information. Sorry. Uh, you're not going to get any information. Because what they do is Democrats say, well, we're accusing Trump of this. They have no direct evidence. Um, even President Zelensky states that there was no quid pro quo. The transcript is there for everyone to read. But then you get Rolling Stone. Trump brags about in concealing impeachment evidence. We, we have all the material. They don't. You see, the president says impeachment is going well and that he has been watching from Davos. This is Rolling Stone. President Trump said he's happy with the way impeachment trial is going thus far because his administration has not released materials that would hurt his cause. No, it's not. That's not what he said. This is just another example of media just spinning everything. So Senate Republicans uh, rallied around Trump. They blocked and prevented Democrats from accessing information and from obtaining witnesses because there's no specific crime that he's accused of committing and there's no direct evidence that he even withheld military assistance because he's afraid of Biden's no malarkey bus tour. Furthermore, Clinton's going to be nominee, not Biden. But anyway, when we released that conversation, all, all, all heck broke loose with Democrats. 
they, uh, Trump said, because they said, wait a minute, th that this is much different than uh, what Adam Schiff told us. The president continued, so we're doing very well. I got to watch the impeachment trial enough. I thought our team did a very good job, but honestly, we have all the material. They don't have the material. He's referring to material that exonerates him. He's not, he's not referring to material that they could use to implicate him. But Democrats have spun this. The Washington Post, like, oh my God, bottomless corruption. The bottomless corruption is them. They're the ones who went all in with Clinton and who will go all in with Clinton again. They're the ones who said Clinton will uh, might win uh, Texas and Arizona and North Carolina. And then they, piv then they just pivoted and said, oh, well, you know, Russia interfered because of uh, the DNC was hacked by Russia because they were so afraid of, of Clinton. All of this nonsense. There's no direct evidence there either. It was an intelligence, these are intelligence reports that allege based on confidence, high confidence assessments. So when asked about the impeachment trial, Trump initially uh, spoke about what he usually refers to as the perfect call with Ukrainian uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky. Guess what? Zelensky numerous times stated there was no quid pro quo. So what do Democrats have? Nothing. In that phone conversation in July 25th, 2019, Trump reportedly asked Zelensky to investigate the Bidens eight times. So what? He should have been 300 times. Biden's corrupt. So is his son, very likely. The Trump administration has exerted executive privilege while ignoring subpoenas for documents and have directed individuals not to respond to subpoenas requested requests since the beginning of the impeachment process. Well, guess, guess what? Guess who also is going to fight a demand to testify? Joe Biden. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that Joe Biden would also fight a, a formal demand from Congress? For comparison, the Clinton administration turned over. Oh, here we go. From for comparison, the Clinton administration turned over more than ninety thousand pages of documents and materials during its impeachment. For comparison, they had to because he lied under oath, and he uh, he obstructed justice. Why? Because he was covering up what he got in the Oval Office. See, something took place with Clinton. Okay, there is no equivalent. Democrats. Okay, the Clintonian type of politics is not sustainable. And after Clinton loses to Trump again this election, Democrats will have to move away forever from that type of Clintonian politics. Not everything is morally relative. Actually, most things are not simply morally relative. To try to make everything morally relative, well, it's just the same. No, actually, with Trump, it's not bringing up Clinton doesn't make Trump moral, Trump's issues or whatever they are morally relative. Bringing up Clinton, Clinton is actually not morally relative. Only one person destroyed a country with her foreign policy. That's Madam Secretary. Trump did not. They're, they're, they're far worse. Only one person spread a photo of Obama in African attire. Trump didn't. Yeah, well, he was, it was bad that he uh, engaged in the birther myth. That's true. Very bad. But there's no comparison. Clinton actually spread a photo utilizing the myth in a, an election. In an election, Trump wasn't even part of an election. He wasn't running until 2016. She, she utilized that in 20, 2008. And that's in addition to uh, bringing up the assassination of RFK. In addition to a 3 a.m. ad that was actually a subliminal ploy to, uh, to get uh, Democrats to, to vote for her. But here, usually the Trump... For, that's the thing. It's like they demand... Okay, Demanding evidence from Bill Clinton is not the same as demanding evidence from Trump because Bill Clinton actually had relations. Oh, that's right, I did. He had relations in the Oval Office. You have to be, let's put it this way. Bill Clinton is so uh, sordid that you can't even get into it on YouTube because it's against YouTube policies. So, yeah, what he did with Monica Lewinsky and all the different... Um, types of behavior they engaged in, very interesting forms of behavior, um, that happened. I just want to say that I never had relations. Uh, oh, oh, you mean of a, a physical nature? Oh, that's right. Well, maybe I did, but it was uh, sanctioned by Congress? No, it wasn't. Nobody knew what Clinton did. He lied about what he did. What he did took place. We have Monica Lewinsky as a witness and a participant. <laughs> we have blue dresses. We have everything. I don't want to sneeze. All right, so, so you have you have 
it's it's two different ball games. So when they demand evidence from Bill Clinton, he gives he, he they're always good at giving ninety thousand pages of documents. Clinton got gave fifty thousand pages. She deleted the thirty thousand emails, which are probably sixty to seventy thousand, eighty thousand worth of pages, because it implicated her. Do you think Bill Clinton was going to give anything that implicated him? The guy obstructed justice. He was he was impeached for lying under oath and obstructing justice. Trump was not. And if indeed, if indeed he committed a crime, or if indeed he worked with Russia, why didn't they even mention either of those things within the articles of impeachment? Huh? But here, so I'm reading a Rolling Stone article. I mean, it gives you everything you need to know. Usually, the Trump administration either refuses to explain their stonewalling or excuses their lack of cooperation away by bashing the investigation, calling it illegitimate or a witch hunt, because it is. This is a liberal publication. When liberals are, um, are standing behind FBI investigations that are fostered, not autonomous investigations, not like, oh, they're just trying to find if somebody committed a crime. So when I was saying, you know, FBI, do your job, I didn't realize that Comey and Strzok and McCabe and, and people like Strzok were saying, we will stop Trump. If you have an autonomous, um, impartial law enforcement agency and they're doing a job, then the evidence should speak for itself. But with, with Clinton, like I said, he actually engaged in an act and then covered up that crime. So the, the demand for evidence with him was warranted. The demand for what they consider evidence in documents or testimony is not warranted. They're just trying to torment Trump because they fabricated, oh, well, he, he withheld military assistance because he's afraid of Biden. Um, and then it says, but here, rather astonishingly, Trump seems to be f flatly admitting to withholding evidence. Of course he's withholding uh, information. The information is not evidence, though, because guess what? There's no predicate crime. Evidence of what? Evidence of that he was justified in withholding military assistance? Well, he doesn't have to prove that to you because he hasn't been, it, it hasn't been proven that he's not, he wasn't justified. The sensibilities and the um, neuroses and the uh, allegations of Democrats are fueled by their palpable fears regarding losing again next election. They're going to lose. They know that. So they're like, well, you know what? We have the House. Let's just make it as uncomfortable as possible for Trump. That's all they want to do. They're not worried about Medicare for all. There's this absurd notion, by the way, that Bernie Sanders would pick Tulsi Gabbard as, as, as his vice president. Bernie Sanders can't even endorse a pundit. He endorsed a pundit, then unendorsed that pundit. The guy is like, like you remember the like Gumby? He's like, Gumby is more um, firm, has more backbone. I mean, <laughs> the notion that Bernie Sanders would do anything that the Democrats didn't want is absurd. You want to know who broke up or who was in between? This is, this is a great picture, by the way, the other debate. It was Tom Steyer in between Warren as she was uh, lying about Bernie Sanders saying that he, would, uh, that he, he didn't think a woman could win. She lied about that. But guess who is in between them? Oh, I just want to say hello, Bernie. Tom Steyer, a billionaire. Billionaires aren't afraid of, of Bernie Sanders. Oh, we're going to get the billionaire class. They're not afraid of Bernie Sanders. What he's done with his movement, it's become a giant bowel movement split into two by Elizabeth Warren. But anyway, Trump fights back. Tulsi Gabbard, as you can see today, fights back. He's, withholding ev uh, he's not withholding evidence. He's withholding documents. And they're blocking testimony because you could do the same thing with the Clinton Foundation which is infinite. This is not morally relative. It's not whataboutism, which is hilarious. The left lives. It's called hypocrisy, which is what the left tries to prove with Trump regarding uh, nepotism and Biden. It, which, that even, isn't even nepotism. It's not about nepotism. It's about Biden's son uh, getting millions of dollars because of access and because of um, his, his father firing a prosecutor potentially potentially because that prosecutor was looking into the company funneling millions to his son hunter but anyway um you can't ask for evidence 
when there's no when you haven't proven that the documents or the testimony you want is linked to uh, a cri- is linked to a crime. I can't just say, well, you know what? Open up your wallet. I want to see what's in your wallet. I want to see what's in that briefcase. Open up the trunk of your car. Why? You haven't accused me of anything. Well, I don't care. I want to. I want to know what's in there. What's in your? Uh, what's in your house? Open up your house. I want to go through your your stuff. Even if you even if you accuse somebody of something, you still protect them under the Bill of Rights. But the point is, they want they're treating Trump in the manner that they would never treat any other um, presidency. So you have clear cut quid pro quo with the Clinton Foundation, but nobody investigated. Not one person. Not one person with the Clinton Foundation testified under oath. Gee, I wonder why. And they want everyone to testify under oath with Trump, and he hasn't. He doesn't have the litany of pay-to-play schemes the Clinton Foundation does. Give me your thoughts below. You can't demand evidence when you haven't even proven that the documents you want are linked to anything, or linked to a crime, or linked to any misconduct. Give me your thoughts below. Check out H.R. Goodman's other channel.